Uh, hi everyone, my name is Reem Bashir and I'm working as a cybersecurity engineer in at Reba Maya. And then I'm um, part-time student at uh, DMU. Uh, so basically today I'm going to talk about my PhD research, which is about machine learning and detecting the uh, detecting the emerging uh, attacks on the automotive Ethernet uh, network. So uh, we're going to start with the, uh, talking about the research aim and then about the vehicle network as a uh, the, as an overall uh, one. And then after that we're going to talk about uh, the automotive Ethernet why automotive Ethernet, and then uh, what are the uh, automotive Ethernet threats. And then from after that, we're going to talk about the cybersecurity standards on the automotive Ethernet, on the automotive, basically. And then from there, we're going to talk about the IDS and why we need IDS. And after that, just the next steps. So basically, the search aim is uh, just to uh, creating uh, this IDS where we can, uh, where we can detect and uh, yeah, the word can sorry, but it can detect uh, the threats, uh, which the emerging threats on the automotive uh, uh, on the automotive uh, network and basically uh, on the automotive uh, internet network. So if you're going to talk about the automotive uh, in vehicle network, so basically as we can see here, we have like different kind of uh, in vehicle network. The most uh, famous one, and the more mature one, is the CAN network, and a lot of cars now you, you can see that they are using this uh, network. Uh, the other one is uh, FlexRay. Uh, basically, they're using the FlexRay for uh, safety. And uh, it's why they're using it for safety, because it's uh, time uh, sensitive. That's why they're uh, using it for safety. The other one is uh, the 100 or 1000 based T1, which is uh, automotive Ethernet. And we can see that uh, this network is just connecting like uh, ECUs together. And in the uh, now we can see that uh, the uh, ECUs is increasing in the, the basically the customer is demanding like more luxury and more comfortable and more safety. That's why we're the increasing the functionality and increasing the uh, ECUs. And with increasing the functionality, that means we need like more data. And that's why we uh, a lot of uh, cars now tend to use uh, automotive internet. So what is automotive Ethernet? Basically, automotive Ethernet is the same as the standard Ethernet, the one that we have, but only different is in the encoding and also in the number of twisted pairs. Basically, the standard Ethernet in IT is like having like eight, stand, eight uh, twisted pairs, but here we have like only two twisted pairs. Why? Because we want to decrease the number of, uh, so we need to decrease the weight of the cable. Uh, we have like different kind of generation for automotive Ethernet. The first generation is uh, the one we're using for diagnostic. The second generation is using for uh, IDS, sorry, for driver assistant uh, and infotainment. And the third one is for the network background. Basically, now in the, in the market, we've seen these two. We still haven't seen uh, automotive Ethernet as a network as, or as a backbone. Uh, next one is uh, why we need the uh, automotive Ethernet. Basically, we need like faster data and communication. Why? Because we're going to use it for something like the ADAS. We're going to use it for something like autonomous uh, vehicle. And in the autonomous vehicle, we're going to use it for the sensors. And in the sensors, we need like uh, we need something that can handle all this data. So that's why we're gonna need using uh, automotive Ethernet. And then also we need uh, something like more flexible due to the fewer wire. And uh, it's not like uh, FlexRay. FlexRay, like, there is a lot of equipment there. That's why we're, uh, automotive uh, Ethernet is going to come as a more uh, applicable solution. So basically, here we can see that uh, there is uh, in the future all these red one is going to be the automotive Ethernet. Uh, this is acting as a backbone, and then we have ones for the ADAS, and then we have like ones for the infotainment system. Uh, for now, in the in the market, we're not seeing like a lot of uh, uh, IOM using automotive Ethernet because they they tend to use like the CAN because it's more mature. However, the CAN they have like some problem with it because you cannot like apply all the security. You can apply all the security controls, for example, Max or uh, Mac or Freshness Vario because it's like the the, the data the data bandwidth for it is like small. It's only eight bit. However, the automotive Ethernet is like having like more bits for it. But they, uh, until now, they are not like uh, want to go and switch to the automotive Ethernet. But hopefully in the future, they will need to do that and they will need to uh, 
go to the random functions. So that uh, automotive uh, Ethernet threads, basically because we said that automotive uh, auto, uh, Ethernet is the same as a standard Ethernet. That's why uh, most of the uh, most of the vulnerability on the standard Ethernet is going to be applicable as well on the automotive Ethernet. Uh, let's talk now about automotive uh, standards. So basically last year was like a good year for uh, automotive uh, cybersecurity basically because we have like three regulations have been uh, came into force and then we have like two uh, standards also came to uh, publish. So basically the, the main, the, we want to focus here on the, this regulation which is uh, regulation 155 uh, which is about the cybersecurity. Basically what they're saying that they say like you need to analyze the product before you put it in the market, and then after you're doing that, you need to monitor it during the life uh, the lifetime of the vehicle, and then at the same time, like if you detect anything, you need to respond. This is where we're gonna find something like uh, IDS coming into useful help because using the IDS we can be able to monitor and detect, and then after that we're gonna send this data that being collected from the IDS and send it to the VSOC, and the VSOC we're gonna do like analyze it more. And after they analyze it, they're gonna uh, send like dates or something. It depends on and uh, depends on the, the analysis, and then it's gonna be having the response. Uh, automotive uh, Ethernet ideas. Basically, if you're gonna search for automotive ideas, you're gonna find uh, like a lot of information about the automotive uh, can ideas. However, uh, I wasn't able to find like a lot of info uh, of papers about the auto uh, automotive uh, Ethernet ideas. And I found like three ones. One of them is just the concept, and the other is just acting as a, uh, acting as a detecting by detecting only the the uh, application there. However, I want on this project. I want to focus on detecting it as a backbone, whereas the Ethernet is going to act in as a backbone. Uh, the next one is this is automotive uh, Ethernet dataset. Uh, you'll find like I found like one good. Uh, data set, but it was like for CAN and from South Korea in lab, uh, but I wasn't able to find like a good data set for at attacks for uh, ETH, automotive Ethernet. I, I found like only one which was like about AVP data set. And yeah, that's why I created this one uh, where I'm using like vector box. I'm using uh, uh, red. Uh, I'm using this intrepid uh, boards so that I can create it the network where I have like here the gateway which is acting as a backbone and then here we have like the power chain which is CAN. So basically we have like here as converting from CAN to Ethernet and from Ethernet is connecting these together as well. Uh, so I did like ARPS working on those attack for now but still sorry in the future I'm going to continue with generating this data and then I'm going to uh, I have to have like more uh, Reviews about the uh, machine learning techniques and if, if I'm trying to do. That's it. A round of applause for him, please.